this time we'll call the meeting of October 6, 2014 to order. Uh, Mr. Richmond, will you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? Thank you very much. Roll call, please. Thank you. Council Member Stevenson? Present. Council Member Friend? Present. Mayor Velasquez? Here. Council Member Valdivia? Here. Council Member Gomez? Here. City Manager Rivera? Present. City Attorney Diaz? Present. Chief of Police Wester? Here. And Deputy City Clerk Christine Black? Here. Thank you. Verification of agenda posting? The agenda for the council meeting of October 6 was posted on the bulletin board at City Hall on October 1st at 11.20 a.m. per government code section 54954.2. Thank you. Employee service awards. So today, uh, I'd like to honor Jeff, Jeff Hall. He's our public works inspector. Unfortunately, he's not able to be here today. Uh, but Jeff Hall has been here for 25 years. He is and has been for the last 25 years and uh, essentially for all the time that uh, I've been working with him, a very valuable employee uh, for the engineering department. Uh, Jeff is the eyes and ears in the field. Uh, he's been responsible for training other inspectors that have um, that have came and, and worked for us when uh, when times were a little bit better and we had two inspectors. Uh, but he has uh, accepted a very increased role in the engineering department. He uh, he does uh, all the inspection out in the field, and uh, we find that when he takes his vacations, that it's very difficult to uh, to keep up with what he was was doing before he left. So um, Mr. Hall has been, uh, like I said, a very valuable employee and, and uh, for 25 years, he's really served the city well. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Chief O'Connor is here. He was. He ran out the back door. How about Mr. Lee? While Mr. Lee's coming to the podium, Mr. Mayor, I can say that I know Mr. Alvarez couldn't attend tonight, so we'll give him uh, his pin at a later date. Okay. It is my pleasure this evening to recognize <laughs> two uh, maintenance uh, staff members of our Community Services Department for 20 years of service. First of all, uh, Adolf Salinas. Uh, Adolf uh, has been with us, like I said, for 20 years and has worked in various departments, started in our streets department and spent time in the sanitation division and Adolph is one of those employees that is a jack of all trades and is real critical to our, our uh, streets operations where he's assigned now in our streets and parks division and Adolph uh, does a lot of things that you'll see out on the streets in the way of uh, painting the legends and crosswalks and things that he's part of the crew that paints the curbs and uh, keeps everything good in the way of our, our uh, regulatory signs, uh, he'll, he'll uh, be an operator of some of the equipment. And if he's not in the streets, we usually have him uh, helping out in the parks division where he may be on a mower or working on irrigation systems. So he's one of those valuable valuable folks. Unfortunately, I don't think uh, Adolph was able to make it tonight, but we'll make sure that he gets his pin. So anyhow, Adolph Salinas, 20 years of service. And uh, my second employee is uh, Joe Arbalo, who's uh, in our water <coughs> division. And uh, Joey is also being recognized for 20 years of service this evening. And uh, unfortunately, I, I know he had a, another commitment uh, that he wasn't able to make it tonight. But Joe, like uh, a lot of employees in our, uh, 
in our community services department. Started at a lower level and worked his way up. Uh, Joey came to us as a junior water operator, which I don't even know if we have that classification anymore, but uh, earned his uh, certifications in both um, distribution and transmission uh, and worked his way into a, a higher classification as a water operator and uh, has uh, been one of those folks that is very critical to the uh, water division because he's one of the best backhoe operators that we have in our, uh, in our department and heavy equipment operator. So he's valuable in, in respect to uh, whenever we're digging, uh, he's usually the person that's on the equipment that's uh, trying to find those pesky uh, leaks in the uh, street or wherever they may be. But uh, again, uh, 20 years of service for uh, Joe Arbalo. Chief, Chief O'Connor, you're up. I think they're trying to change the language. I know. Right. Say something nice about Leo. Um, tonight, the 25-year uh, pin for Leo Alvarez. Um, he got promoted from uh, captain this year to division chief. Um, he's also um, acting as our fire marshal for the department. He's doing an excellent job. He would like to pick up his pin on November 1st um, at that meeting or the me first meeting in November. So um, I'd like to put this on hold so he can accept it here in front of you guys. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. Okay, tonight we have a couple of proclamations, but we only have one person to accept, correct? Right. Renee Hanglish. For the, for the Red Ribbon Run? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> Someone is here for her? <clears throat> okay. Whereas alcohol, tobacco, and drug abuse costs California over $32.1 billion every year and impedes the ability of Californians to lead healthy, productive lives. I, Ignacio Velasquez, Mayor of the City of Hollister, do hereby proclaim October 23rd through October 31st, 2014 as Red Ribbon Week in the City of Hollister. Um, on behalf of uh, Renee Hinkla and San Benito County Behavioral Health, I'd like to say thank you. Um, this year, the San Benito County Behavioral Health Red Ribbon Week Committee will be featuring annual calendar contests based on the theme, Picture Me Drug Free. Original artwork, photography, web designs, digital art, carvings, quilting, and needlework can now be submitted by students grades K through 12. Submissions are due <coughs> to Behavioral Health by October 17th. Our annual Red Ribbon Week 5K run is scheduled for Octo Saturday, October 11th in downtown Hollister at the 400 block of San Benito Street. There will be various community organizations, organization booths, entertainment, photo booths, kids fun run, food and music. San Benito County Behavioral Health would like to thank the city of Hollister, the Hollister Police Department, County Probation Department, the Sheriff's Department, CHP, Hollister Downtown Association, other community organizations, and our sponsors for their dedication and support for a drug-free community. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Mayor, for the next one, go pink for a week, and October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and the president of the Hollister Firefighters asked that this be placed on the agenda, and then he couldn't be here tonight, Vince Greel, Greewald. So um, city clerk's office will make certain that he gets that proclamation. And my own little caveat to this is to urge every woman to get a mammogram this month or to have the men with women in your lives, please get your women in for a, a mammogram. Early detection is certainly the cure. You know, I saw a... Um Firefighter Charlie Bodea's picture on Facebook with a nice fitting pink shirt. I think we should post that picture for everyone to see. Second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
All right, let's move forward to consent agenda. Are there any items council would like to pull? I would like to pull A4 and A8. A488. Any others from council? Number six. A6. Do we have any requests from public? Yes, Mr. Mayor. A2, A3, A4, A6, A7, and A8. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there a motion? Move to approve the agenda as amended. Second. All in favor? I motion carries 5 0 vote. Move forward to item A2. Keith Snow. Hello, Council. Uh, reason why I'm here is uh, uh, for uh, just uh, specifically uh, this one thing that I see on agenda is the expenditures. If you, if you look in the paper on, on the third, the uh, uh, entire period of time I'm lying, but I ran down $20,000 for printers. Well, uh, if you can see it black and white, it says the people, we have to watch the expenditures. And then that's not to that. So the clear solar, $7 million to down 10. And, uh, and the kitchen supplies, we're on the phone on, the phone on 18th. When we sit the 18th, that uh, about the kids' supplies. I've been asked for the so-called loan that he does. Tax payer people on the move, I haven't seen nothing yet. I mean, the point is why you guys see all the expenses. You, I mean, one thing you can, uh, care, care, I mean, okay, what we say, demand nothing. But what, what I'm trying to say as a person and a citizen, in the city, I mean, where where we got to, you? okay, the the expenditures, uh, warm registers, whatever, all all these are not to her not, where it's called waste of spending, and that money that you guys okay were, were like I said before, <coughs> and like you said, and on eighteenth question where, where you can say it. you said it, I say, I mentioned it before. As you guys seen before in any city, right? In what I, I just want to do things right way. But points right. You can do uh, say how you guys said uh, Pauline were fifteen me fifteen thousand dollars uh, were were fifty thousand dollars we deal with the city. Well that's not untrue. That I mean I like Pauline, right? I like all you guys up there, right? But let's be real. Let's be re realistic, right? Right? And surpass the past. Let's get busy. Do things right here. Because for a fact, <coughs> all the money guys waste, we do have higher education. Let, let's, let's, for one, mighty, not pin in, in my, where, where I can say that word. But the point, right? This, let's not want to, uh, one day waste, mighty, to cancel for free. Fun speech, right? The one we waste where this let's uh, give the kids uh, like where all schools uh might let on bikes, uh S box, right? And stuff like that. Let's help the kids to do their higher education as high school ever ever. Let's let's uh, like give information as a price to do do stuff. But not things that you guys do it. And then we're always, we're not going forward, we're going backwards. Let's be alert, be observant. Thank you. Thank you, but uh, Mr. Snow, I'd like to correct one item. You said publicly that we spent $120,000 on a printer, and I want to make sure it's clear to the public, it was actually $79. The $120,000 you're seeing is a grand total for the general fund 101 on that month. So it was actually $79. And I know it's complicated to read the financial statement, but that's just, I want to make sure it's clear to the public. Thank you, Mr. Snow. Thank you very much. Mr. Snow, thank you. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, 5-0 vote. 
Move on to Mr. Snow. Thank you very much. A3. Keith Snow. All right. Uh, this is for the, the, the Woodsco uh, to find the, the 14, 15 for their show. Let's go again. Which team not true either? Because uh, of the black and white. So don't call me a liar. They're like the fifteen thousand dollars for sort of pounds. Mr. Solar. Snow, please stay on this topic. It's about the air uh, show. Your okay. question. What okay. is your question okay. on the for topic? Okay. Example. What we're doing is that you guys want to do the yeah, why what the mean was when you you guys say it's good thing where the air show is, but it for one, how can I have a call for the officer? Right, and I like my champions, right? But we can't do on polls. Mr. Snow, this item's actually about the date of the I air know, show. Do you I have know, a question I about I the date? I know, I know that. Would you like it on another date, and perhaps? No, 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 I'm talking about. This I item on this discussion is about I the date I of the air show. Do you have I a question know, about I the date? I know about the date. But this are is you, what this are, is about. Me, are you guys sure to put on another date? Sure to have another date for air show? Because we're losing money. We're losing money, no ideas. But they have, like I said, gave before, have people involved in the city, right? Making that the day, have people involved to making that day. Because already, like what's called said, already, already keep it up, losing money for the, every year. That's that's what that's what you guys are doing. We need craver and not spend my people pay for this. I'm for the air show, but it's called organization. Mr. Snow, me. this item is about the date I, I for know the air show. The please, I know, I know about if you have a date that you want to recommend to us, please say so. Oh, well, 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 a good day when, 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 when uh, it's good for the people. I didn't pick a date. Thank you very much. Is there a motion? So moved. So moved. Is there a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. I'm sorry, Bible. who made the second, please? Thank you. Mr. Let's move forward to item A4. I'm sorry, Mr. I had another speaker for that, and I'm sorry. Oh, sorry. That's my fault. Okay. Mike Corbin. <coughs> oh, thank you, City Council and Mayor. I um, can't get it out of my head that um, maybe the air show would be really great during a rally. The air show needs more attendees, and the rally needs more more things to do, you know. So I know it's a big challenge for public safety, and um, I don't know if it's a great idea for all the factions involved, but the idea that you would have the 4th of July rally and have an air show going on at the same time sounds pretty enticing, you know. Anyway, that's my opinion. Thank you very much. Okay, let's move forward with item A4. <coughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council members. <coughs> yeah, I have some questions on this. Yes, sir. On, you're asking for $10,000 just to market <coughs> the air show? To the Bay Area, yes, sir. In the Bay Area. It seems like an awful lot of money. What are we going to get for that money? Do you have an idea? Um, we're going to do targeted radio advertising to the areas that we know come to the show due to our, uh, our surveys, and um, limited television up there as a broad market tool. Are there other questions from council? I, I'd like to ask, how many, how many um, TV stations were you planning on advertising? Was it through one, KSBW? It would be one, um, and it, that's going to run about six grand. And that, that gives you about 1,500 uh, commercials, 1,000 in English, 500 in Spanish. Okay. Council Member Gomez? Um, as somebody that obviously did this for about 10 years in, in the pizza industry, um, 6000 uh, sorry, $10,000 um, would absolutely go nowhere in the Monterey Bay Area market, let alone the San Francisco Bay Area. So it seems like, to me, um, you know, more precise targeted marketing for <coughs> folks in the aviation sector and maybe some family fun type of stuff would um, would be a better use of it. That's just 
my opinion, obviously, I'm not trying to micromanage here, but, um, you know, doing this, we had a, you know, a quarter million dollar budget and, um, um, and it, 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 would, it wouldn't go very far. So $10,000, um, um, Ten thousand dollars. I'm not proposing that we go any further than this, but ten thousand dollars is going to be really tough for you to get really significant exposure for this. So, yeah, I guess the only concern I have is just to make sure that we are we're being very careful in on, in how we market the the air show and be very strategic in, in how we how we use the money. Those are those are my concerns. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I agree with Councilmember Gomez. I think. Before we agree to ten thousand dollars, we need to understand what the the full plan is because if we don't target the right customers, we're going to spend ten thousand dollars and get back a few hundred. So, I think we need to step back, try to understand what type of air show, who we're going after, put the plan together, and present more of a plan than just an increase in that budget. So I don't think it's going to go very far in the Bay Area. So I think we need to just step back a second and. Take a better look at this. Any other questions from council? We have a speaker card. Keith Snow. Me, me, uh, please know that my to make it five ten hours. It's five ten hours, for example. <laughs> it's called preparation. If you look at me, what I'm doing. Right? And I ran multiple companies, right? And bring smart and knowledgeable. For, because, for example, all, all, like I said before, if you, if you look at the record on the air show, and I'm for the air show, <laughs> but at points, right? I want to get five that and I was half. Uh, and uh, when the dollars run, withdraw, this will this withdraw. Have five ten hours. <coughs> Let's do five ten hours, and and see what they can do. Because if you do ten ten hours, you need more. For one, I, I want to see the, the the TV. I see like one week before. But when you advertise, advertise two three months before, or where in this go that seeing counties. To be the bring the people over to our city. That's what we call marketing strategize, be strategic, bear concept in business. <laughs> but the point is right, how we do business in the city is ridiculous. I mean we spend more money on the consultants in the city. <laughs> and we have all the engineers, right? Once you get the engineering going, why don't you engineer this? Right, me, I'm a retired engineer, but the point is right with the ideas. Like Lee said, and I'm down the best, but the point is right, we spend so much money, and then let's be an honorable, right, about this part. Because for a for, for fact, is more yeah. let's, let's think broader, long this, let's advertise. Once you guys see what you can do for us, the citizens, because uh, we should have a workshop on this. <coughs> We should have workshop. Can one day when we're bitter by something else, by uh, or change the ordinances, by way we do workshop? Are you guys talk about workshops? What can do? When you guys have the workshop, you have uh, what's called secret workshops. <laughs> I'm getting you guys have an email. I'm getting an email to be part of the city. Do you, you know, you guys push back, right? And to be, let's be business on this part. Because you want us uh, taxpayers, right, to spend ten thousand dollars for air show, right? Or whatever you guys are doing. But the way you guys see things, you have set pace. Thank you very much, <coughs> Mr. Snow. Uh, are there other speakers? No. Mr. Corbin is now a speaker. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> And you're on record now. Oh, thank you, Mayor. Um, talk about marketing and getting more people to go to air shows, so that's the avenue to profit. There will be all those motorcycle riders in town, 
and it would almost be free marketing to make them aware of the motorcycle show. So that's the concept, you know, the motorcycle riders come to town, we give them a better experience because we got an air show going on at the same time, and they see that plane coming right over San Benito Street, you get a couple Mustangs out there, <laughs> you got customers. <laughs> Thank you. Would it be better to maybe table this item for a future date, or I um, think we just we need more time to understand what understand. that money can be used for. I, I, it, and that's and that's abs absolutely okay. And one of the things I'd I'd like to say as part of this um, small presentation is that the intent wasn't necessarily to remove the marketing that we've currently been doing um, as part of the normal air show budget. Again, if we if you recall when we talked a little bit about the air show at the study session, the idea was is that the kind of the point is it is an opportunity for us to invite um, obviously guests from the north down to our um, um, the airport and our city as part of you know the Father's Day weekend so <clears throat> the, the general fund request that we put together was really just an additional to what we had been normally doing in the past through KSBW and some of the other organizations that were doing the Monterey Bay area so that was it. K-I-O-N. K-I-O-N sorry don't want to get the wrong TV station. Yeah. <laughs> so you're all right if we table this for a while and get yeah. better understanding yeah. can we yeah I, I don't have a problem with and honestly I'm not saying I even have a problem with spending an additional ten thousand dollars on it um, but maybe um, you know maybe something a little bit more more specific on on the spending of it I think would be fine with me so you guys you want um, the council would like to have a better understanding about the time the number of commercials the spots that would be run from period to period and any print that we also do up there as I, well? I personally would like a better understanding of what we're spending, how we're spending the money this time. Um, so we make sure we're a little more focused on where we're going. What, what is the air show attempting to do? Bring the local residents out, bring people from the Bay Area out, bring the airplane enthusiasts oh. out, bring those that want to bring jets here out. What, what are we trying to do so we can kind of focus those dollars on that clientele? Or as Mr. Corbett says, for the motorcycle riders. So, okay. So, is there? Do we need a motion? A yes, motion to continue. That is correct. I'll make motion. that motion. Second. I'll second that. Uh, second. Councilmember Valdivia seconded. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Five zero. Vote. Thank you very much. Item A six. Uh, this item is for the the sunsetting of the for the fire union their their MOU expired June 30th and part of their in their MOU was the sunsetting of the city picking up their contributions to the retirement and per legal counsel we are honoring that part of the contract but we are in the middle of negotiating with that with the fire union. Yeah. Council members? Council member Friend? Aren't we taking away the. the no, it would be subject to negotiation. Okay. Council member Aldivia? Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I have a question in terms of the sunset. Does that. Because I don't, I, don't, I don't know what the clause was or whatever is in there. Is it supposed to roll over? I thought that the, maybe. Uh, the union would have to come back to the table to negotiate it. To me, a sunset, it means a sunset and it, it moves over. Can you Co explain that to correct. me? Correct. And part of the, in the MOU was that the employees would pay their portion of their PERS contribution. And that piece of the, of the MOU would end on that day. We would revert back to what it was before the MOU where the city was picking up their portion of the PERS contribution. So that piece ended at June 30th. So per PERS requirement is that we need to have a resolution in place to pay their, their portion of the retirement contribution. However, currently we are negotiating in middle of negotiations with that, that organization. So this is uh, above and beyond whatever is being negotiated? 
currently, in, uh, because we're in the middle of negotiations right now, and that item had sunset or end on Ju yeah. June 30th, we have to honor that piece of the contract until we have a new contract in place. And, what, and are the negotiations going on right now? Uh, you know, what is that, what is that gonna happen? We are trying to meet with them currently. Um, we've offered a few different times to meet with them, and we're waiting for them to uh, respond with what dates they would like to meet with us. So what this uh, uh, resolution will do, uh, what you're saying is that we have to pay up until it gets a new contract, and a good contract, what, if it drags on for a year, then we have to pay for a year? Uh, with the negotiator and myself, we don't feel like it would negotiate, uh, that would go that long. There are other uh, ways that we can negotiate with them. I had a question about um, what is the cause on here? I'm not sure I can find it. It was um, oh the seven thousand five um, <clears throat> five sixty five per period financial uh, impact. What is that? Uh, per pay period. Is, yeah, is it per person or? Per pay, for the Hollister Firefighters U Union, that group, that's what it costs us, per pay period. Which would be every two weeks. Every two weeks, correct. It would be every two weeks. Every two weeks? Yes. Okay, Council Member Stevenson. Yes. Now the contract, a new contract, would that go retroactive? It depends on what we one. negotiate. I mean, that's what I mean. That's what we would. We we've been given direction on what the council would like us to negotiate. And we'll so, if um, the union agrees to continue their portion of contribution, and it is retroactive, pursuant to other items on the contract, as well, would we would the fund be paid back? From the or reimbursed the amount that, that, uh, that is a scenario that could happen. I to a point I don't want to answer too too much because then I'd be negotiation negotiating with the public and the union through this. Mm -hmm. So that is a scenario that could happen. Okay. Are there any other questions from council? At the end of the day, we have no choice in this. Am I understand that, that correct? Cor correct. Yes. Past uh, council had adopted the MOU, and that was language in that MOU. You, I mean, you made a legal contract with them with that MOU for that period of time. After the sunset. Now, part of that was the sunset clause in, in that MOU. Uh, Mayor, may I interrupt for a second? Yes. Just to caution the, the council that these items, you're getting real close to negotiations and okay. items that are subject to the Brown Act and should be done in closed session. Okay, are there speakers? Keith Snow. Ben Wright, Tia Wright, McGowan. Well, you look at this part, it seems them seem to be gay over there, and Pauline here, and we'll wait till I say, what's money's gone, contributions? First, got to look at purveyor and the capital we were having to pay. And we were always doing this contribution. And once the money's gone, and right, if you have any finances, it's gone. I mean, the point is, right? Uh, for example, I went, went back and I thought to, to Vince, CEO, the mayor knows what I'm talking about, right? I want to say that word. Right, and then when I see Vince to me about this packet, you know what I'm talking about, Mayor? Dorsen packet? I have no idea what you're talking uh, about. Okay, well, I want to talk about, right? And it might be the bad, but I'm just showing. And it's John, the vice CEO of Firefighter Association, and I'm for the union people. I'm, I'm going to create the jobs, because jobs are to get. But the point is, right, we have to look how much we're spending to contribute money to the, um, for the firefighters. I mean, there's uh, lives, I mean, <coughs> they're good for people here. But the point is, we need these contracts, and we're just going to know a little more. Do you guys really know, and for leadership, 
you should know what, what to do before you put it on the gym. I mean, what's God said, we should, right now, what's God mentioned, all we <coughs> should do that we should not discuss this on the bank and uh, things like this should be by class source. What there is a, what on, on public record, no shame in your game. We should not have nothing by class source. We should own policy, but own policy. We should not hide nothing to people. But all the contracts, <coughs> what we're doing, we're losing money every day. I mean, we can use our most rising, higher education, the reward, help, uh, special long-term fund to help the people. Free flu shots for the citizens, for the people. They can't afford this. <laughs> but the point is, right, why don't we get that? All contracts are killing us. Being like, uh, being people, uh, being sit down on the ground. I mean, don't you get this? You guys no concept about being here. Don't you see this? I mean, that's all I gotta say. I mean, points right. And I mean, I mean, there was, which goes for me and CEO, Fire Fire Association, uh, Vince, I mean, no wise here. Because, like Mike said. Thank you very much, Mr. Snow. Thank you very much. Okay, is there a motion from council? I make a or motion. Or is there a, one more question? Well, I'm afraid to <laughs> comment because it's probably going to be <laughs> okay. construed as negotiating, but if we denied this motion, that money would not be paid, correct? And there would be a gap in the firefighters' pension. Uh, I mean, yeah, if you denied it, but yeah. <laughs> you, denied, you are cor correct, but there might be legal proceedings and breach of contract. We'd be breach, yeah, breach of contract. Okay. Is there a motion? I make a motion. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. No. I hear two against. Did you, Councilman Gomez? Yeah, I seconded the yeah, motion. Okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. Three, two in favor. Thank you. Move forward to item A7. Uh, Snow. Mr. Snow had a question on his speaker's card. What is it for? Uh, the Red Ribbon Run is a national program that has gone on for many, many years. It's to bring substance abuse awareness to the public. Um, in fact, we had the run in Hollister for a good many years, and for the last several years it has been out of town. Chief Westrick was able to get it back into town, so this is a, a good thing for our community. And I don't know if Mr. Snow had any other questions. Mr. Snow, did you have another question with that? Okay. Are you done, Mr. Snow? Yes. Okay, is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries 5 0 vote. Move forward with item A8. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Item A8 is regarding the property 853 San Benito Street. On March 21st of this year, it suffered a catastrophic fire. <coughs> um, the results of that fire um, have been evident to anybody who happens to drive through the area. Um, currently, the building is condemned as unsafe to occupy. It is a danger to the public. Um, it is somewhat fenced off sometimes. Sometimes the fences are closed, sometimes the fences are open. Um, I was asked to bring an item before you about uh, taking abatement action on that property. This is a $100,000 supplemental appropriation from the general fund reserves 
to the code enforcement professional services uh, line item to be able to take steps along those roads. I cannot guarantee you this is enough money. I cannot guarantee you it's not too much money. Uh, it's an educated guess. Uh, none of this money includes any legal fees that may arise out of us taking this action. Just so everybody understands what's going on, I'll run you through what needs to happen. So if you appropriate this $100,000 tonight, um, what will happen is we will determine a vendor to perform lead paint and asbestos contamination evaluations. Once we've selected that vendor, if the property owner cooperates and we gain access to the property, we will go in and provide, uh, perform an inspection for lead paint contamination and asbestos contamination. If the property owner does not cooperate, we will need to obtain a inspection warrant from the court through a legal process to be able to enter the property and perform that inspection. Once that inspection is complete, we can compile an abatement plan for any potential lead paint or asbestos contamination that may exist on the property. It is suspected due to the age of the property. The building was about 100 years old. Um, once we have that plan in place, if we need to proceed with lead paint or asbestos abatement and the amount of money that is allocated will cover that, we will either complete the bidding process depending on the estimated amount if we have to go through the bidding process or not. Once that is complete and the vendor is selected to perform that work, if the property owner uh, cooperates, we will enter the property and perform the lead paint and asbestos removal. If the property <coughs> owner does not cooperate, we will have to go back to court and obtain an abatement warrant, enter the property, perform the work, close the warrant with the court. At that point, we can obtain permission from the Air Resources Board to go ahead with the demolition. Once again, we will evaluate the expected cost of the demolition. If we still can cover it with this initial amount, we will go ahead and proceed with either the bidding process or the vendor selection, select the vendor. Then once again, if the property owner cooperates, we'll enter the property, we will abate the, the building, and then we'll exit the property. Property. If the property owner does not cooperate, we will have to go back to court, get another abatement warrant, enter the property, demolish the building, haul away the building, close out the warrant. At that point, our legal staff will place a lien against the property for the total cost, <coughs> legal costs, and abatement costs for the property. Thank you very much. Is there any questions from council? So, Mike, if I understand this, it wasn't the city's fault to be fired. It wasn't this taxpayer's fault that that building burned down. It wasn't the fault that there's our fault that there's asbestos or hazardous material in that building. But the city, you're going to ask the city taxpayers to abate that. And maybe it'll cost $400,000 to do it, and the property is only worth $200,000. That So the city is, is out correct. because somebody else caused a fire. There's, that just seems like you're pouring money down a hole that we can never recover from. I think that if you're going to have a legal action, the legal action should be condemn that property and take it over by eminent domain, and then we would have some way to go. I think it's a hazardous to the I think it's hazardous to the community, and I think that would be grounds for us to take it over and own it and clean it and sell it. That is an option. I just can't. See, you put a hundred thousand dollars in here, and we don't have a clue what it's going to cost, and it's not our problem. Well, I can tell you that the lead paint abatement for the building at the airport that we did was sixty thousand dollars, and that was an encapsulation that was not a removal. In this case, it would need to be a removal because the building is being demolished. Are there other questions from council? I agree. Uh, first off, I have to say that that building has to come down. It's a danger to the public. It's been nine months. It should have been done by the owner. Now we have a problem that's affecting the citizens of, of the city. We just need to make sure if we're going to do it, what rights do we have to make sure we have, we're getting paid to do that. Mr. Friend pointed a few different ideas out. You're pointing out the lien. We need to make sure we're covered for all costs of that removal. So if we can work that part out and ensure that the city will be paid back, 
either through that property or looking for legal action against the property owner. We need to make sure we have everything lined up to do it correctly. If I may, Mr. Mayor, and Soren, please feel free to jump in. Either way that we go down this path, it, you know, uh, Councilman Fred mentioned eminent domain and, and whatnot. The legal proceedings in that is going to cost us a fortune, and it really doesn't solve the problem right. of the asbestos, the lead base paint, and the actual removal and destruction of the building. Um, either way, those costs are going to be there, and you're absolutely right. I wish the property was worth a whole heck of a lot more than what it is, because you don't know what you're going to end up with when it's all said and done. But um, at the same time, I think that we do have some exposure, and we do have a blighted building downtown. And that's probably one of our main focuses is that we should probably try to eliminate that. I agree. And Mike, I just want to say thank you for bringing this up and making sure we're taking action on it. It's been too long. Do we have speakers? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Tim Lance. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Tim Lance, 2200 Southside Road. I'm the owner of the property that you're discussing. It concerns me that I wasn't informed that this was going to be on the council agenda because it is something that's very obviously directly involved with me, that you're making a decision on my future and the future of my property without my notification. I luckily was informed. The city staff is uh, talking about doing demolition of a building that um, 10 days ago I was notified that I needed to get a demolition permit for. In response to that letter, I got a demolition permit. And if you'd like to see it, I have copies. I can pass them out. Anybody interested? Does, does your demolition permit include the demolition permit, it means that I have to clear the lot. And I could respond also to your fears of lead and asbestos if you care to. I've owned the property for 13 years. I'm a general contractor. My specialty is historic buildings. When I acquired that building, there was relatively no paint on it. It had been not maintained for decades. The paint that you see on there was applied by me, and it is uh, all latex paint. There is no lead paint on the building. You might be able to find some traces if you work real hard, but effectively there's no lead paint. There's Mr. no asbestos in the building anyway. Mr. Lance, you do know you're required to have a test done on that first. That's fine. If you can arrange I don't that I don't test, have any problem with that. Okay, if you can arrange those tests and do it yourself, I think you'd save a lot of money. But I tell you, I'm pretty sure the city had noticed you several times about the problem that building is creating there. No, they have not. Never. You never received this any is letters. The only notification I've ever gotten from the city, or I would have done something. <coughs> would anybody care to see their letter and the permit? If you're going to do the work, we're, we're happy to have you do the work. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Thank you for showing up today. Yeah. Mr. Cham Chambliss, have you provided proper notice? The property owner was notified to secure the property um, at the time of the fire. Um, he is correct. That is the first notice he's received. It is standard procedure for us to provide the property owner with a six-month time period to work out whatever they need to work out with their insurance companies. It takes time to go through that process. Okay, so he says he has a permit, or he has the quote to move forward. <coughs> is that correct, Mr. Lance? Yes. His statement is that the building department issued him a demolition permit. They did, did not provide me with that information. Okay. And he's going to follow up as far as the Monterey <coughs> Bay Area air control, so follow, to follow the laws that are required. Yes, sir. So can, you, can you give him a timeline so he's allowed to do it? He has, he has six months as soon as that demolition permit was issued. 
So this it doesn't look like we have an item on their hands. <laughs> He's doing the work. We're okay. Yeah. Is there a timeline you're going to put on this, though, to get the work done? The demolition permit expires okay. after six, six months. months. Okay. So at this point, we do not need to move forward. Is there other speakers? Yes, Mr. Mayor. Marty Richmond. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, uh, members of the council, Marty Richmond from Hollister. I want to make a few comments on this, uh, one of which is that um, I, I hope that we are taking the appropriate, building the appropriate foundation just in case things don't go the way we think they're going to go, and we are issuing the proper citations as they go. Um, the code enforcement officer came up here and said sometimes the area is secure, sometimes it's not. If it's not secure, then we should issue a citation. If we believe that the property was improperly used, we should issue a citation. If we believe it's in violation of some of the codes, we should issue a citation. Because you, in case things don't go the way you think they're going to go, you have to establish a foundation for your legal actions. And without a, sound, without a uh, citation record, uh, you're not going to have one. And you're going to, not only are you going to be in court, but you're going to be in court forever arguing about whether or not you did the right thing. So let's start doing that. Second thing is, um, by reading through the report, it became obvious to me that we don't have a requirement for people to have um, liability insurance. I mean, you can't get in your car and drive across the street without liability insurance. <laughs> Uh, I believe on today's agenda you have somebody who wanted to close the road to have something, the, the run or something, and you required that they have liability insurance. Uh, I don't remember the exact amount of dollars we put into downtown with our HDA, 14 million, I believe, 16 million, something like that. Those are public funds. We've made an investment downtown, and if we have commercial buildings downtown, and if somebody doesn't want to buy fire insurance and they don't care if their building goes up, that's fine with me. <laughs> Let it go up. They, that's a decision they make. However, whether their neighbor's building goes up or whether the site gets cleaned up, and this is not talking about just this site, this is all any future site that may happen to. So I hope the gentleman who's, who's the owner doesn't take offense because we can't roll back the clock. But... Uh, we should require people to have liability insurance. If they're downtown in our, our uh, RDA district where we put in tens of millions of dollars of public funds, and, and in many cases these buildings are piled one right on top of the other, uh, we want to make sure that if the neighbor's building burns down or it has to be cleaned up or somebody gets hurt that shouldn't be there, that's, they're covered for liability and we don't wind up on the back end of a lawsuit. Now, li telling people they have to have liability insurance is not a friendly, they don't consider that a friendly action. But uh, let's stop being pals with the public. Let's do what's right for the rest of the citizens. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. Do we have any other speakers? Um, sorry, yes. Um, Keith Snow's card actually says he wants to know, but I think he knows now what's going on. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, he does want to say something. I see another one. <laughs> here, here we got warrants and all that. For, and the, you know what's so bad about this? The uh, dame and all that, to take some property. How horrible that is to a citizen. I mean, the point is, right? Remember when we were in the 18 with Dr. Phone? Uh, and on, on the outer door of my article, where I put in the paper, when we the Mexican that was uh, kitchen supplies. We Mr. Snow, remember? this item no, no, is no, not no. about wait, kitchen wait, wait. supplies. It's no, about no, a fire. no, listen. We, um, Brett, Please stay on topic. Okay, this is not let, a point okay, where you I'm, can I'm campaign. I'm going to take a target. One time to Brett on the phone to you, right? And he said that. We loan people money. 
We will know people might. Mr. Snow, the item right. is not about a loan. It's oh, about no, a property no, that's been burned down. Sky sent down Do you have a question, sir? Okay, the question is, right? It don't cost them the money uh, list, uh, by best is due. Uh, how you guys <coughs> do not know that the best in, in, in that building right there? When it fell, where you okay? The one thing with the county, for the central thing, but that is the best is for uh, for entertainment, running bikes in or the uh, uh, where uh, the, uh, that one that one town uh, or with, uh, for the bikes and all that. But but more uh, this over there. What that is the best is, and another thing too, uh, how you guys said about Dane, they they got some gems property. What's with other people? One guy's focus we really on the on the ward on the poles, clean poles and, and let this guy German face on our property. And right in the net thing once you guys see facts first, it has one thing as has me any like of complaints with peace officers of people going in that building over there. He put a, a training fence around it. And a part of part property too. So points right as anything there is there a convenience to uh, do a thing piece of property that's horrible for another thing we will help people right and we spend waste money and like and we don't want our bread making loans to people and you said that too Mr. Mr. Snow, Mr. Stay Restaurant. on the topic please okay, okay well I'm getting on the topic the topic is what that's how you guys said that did for them making that much money. Mr. Snow, the topic is a very dangerous building. I if a child got in there and got killed, uh, we'd uh, be responsible uh, as a city uh, for uh, not uh, doing something about uh, it. That's okay. the topic. Well, let, let, let's help fix the building. Well, let's uh, do We're asking. Thank you very much. Thank you. Your Honor, if I may make a suggestion, perhaps we should table this item for three months. I'll come back after three months with a progress report. If no progress has been made, we'll go ahead and allocate the funds in anticipation of the expiration of the demolition permit after the six months and we'll be in position to take action. I agree that's a good way to uh, handle this. So is there a motion? I'll make a motion that we table this for three months. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you. 5 0 vote. Thank you very much. Thank you Mr. Lance for being here. Move forward to item oh, 89. We've, okay. BC Public Input. Joe Guerrero. Well, let me go through this first. I'm sorry. This is time for anyone in the audience to speak. Go ahead and come up. <laughs> on any item not on the agenda within the subject matter jurisdiction of the council, when the city clerk calls your name, please come to the podium, state your name and city for the record, and <coughs> speak to the city council. Each speaker will be limited to three minutes. Please note that state law prohibits the city council from discussing or taking any action not on the agenda. Thank you. Well, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'd like to let you know, the city know, that for years, my neighbors and I have let the code enforcement office know that my next door neighbor, who lives on 1350 Trieste Drive, was doing a lot of bad things against city codes, but nothing was done. By the end of the year, last year, we were informed by the city that the code enforcement was going to increase, but nothing much was done, except for telling neighbors about their boats and RVs, which was not right. This year, a neighbor and I made a petition against the bad neighbor, and we had it signed by the whole block, except for two housing yeah. <coughs> and except uh, we had a meeting with Mike Chambliss and we gave him the petition and also photographs of all the neighbors wrongdoings but he said there was nothing he could do that's not right no. thank, thank you. you Marty Richmond Good evening again, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. 
I hate to, I hate to use your time for this, but something has to be said. Uh, I rise in opposition to Measure J. I want the, the people of, of, of this city to think about something. There are between 650 and 700 oil wells in Monterey County, and at least half of them are using enhanced oil recovery every day. Now, why isn't anybody in Monterey County carrying the ball? Why are we being targeted? And I'm going to tell you the answer. Because if they went to Monterey County and said, this is going to poison your water, everybody would say, we've got 700 oil wells. We've had them here for 40 years. Show me the poison in the water. They wouldn't be able to do it. And when they went to Monterey County and said, all the crooks and the rapists and the prostitutes are going to come here with the oil wells, people would say, show me that. And they wouldn't be able to do it. And if they said, this will do your community no good, and the people in Monterey County would say, gee, we get seven, seven and a half million dollars a year in taxes out of this, uh, they wouldn't be able to replace that money. The reason they're targeting us is because we don't recover enough oil a year to fill a bathtub. And they want to make sure that we have no future. They say that it will kill our children. They are liars. Nobody dies. You know what they die from? They die from poverty. Because poverty gives you bad health. And poverty gives you crime. And poverty gives you sickness. And poverty gives you all the things you're trying to prevent. And the way to not have poverty is to have some jobs. They don't want jobs. They want Hollister the way it used to be. Why don't you ask these people what they think Hollister used to be 100 years ago? A couple of farmers and a lot of people working in a field for two cents a day. No health care. No education. And when the farming time was up, they would pick their stuff up and go back to Arizona. Well, that's what these people want. They want Hollister exactly the way it used to be. Well, unfortunately, we've got a lot of people here now. We've got 35,000 people, and these people need work. Half of them that do work, work outside of the county. And in July, we had a 7.9% unemployment rate in this county when the nation just went below six. Now, that's what they want. If you vote for Measure J, you're going to give them what they want. So vote against it. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. <coughs> Keith Snow. Uh, Council, one thing I've been noticing for years, right, and now, we're lacking communication. But that guy there, the Mike town neighbor, have a problem. You guys are not worried of it. When it's Bill Wetrick, you not worried of it, right? It's called resolving the problem. Find a solution. And uh, I want to say about Measure J. It's, all, it's called workshops. Things that we need to do, we need to sell, it's called self educate. Be sufficient, city. We're not. We're going on and on. Let's let the people do what you want to do. You guys do what you want to do. Waste some money. <coughs> Let's be smart about things. Let's be logical. Let's be logic. Reason with people. Because we, what we do, we jump the gun. For example, I go over there. We were at the, the, the war chain plant. $340 million. Right? And go. And tell what's on the phone, uh, uh, the engineer, right? You go, I want to get in on trouble, right? I go, I said, I'm a name. I go, have we broken on that? No. What? We're paying for some, we're paying for sunny right now. Especially, we were looking thing, assessment tax, we were trying to people at Rawls. Uh, reach a, a post raising taxes, but we we wherever we try to find to get picking people to the cents and dollars in their pocket, we'll do it. We know we are, we're like pickpockets. We should quit all that. We, we should be more 
to read the Rishi Epitur. It wastes time. We're wasting time here. We, at the point, right? Once you let people be involved, people be involved. We don't. We, we, you guys have problems, right? Well, we, never, we should not find a solution. We should find solutions. We should have strategic plans. We don't have that here. We're pointing fingers. That, uh, <coughs> that's all we're doing. But, but the point is, right, when it's hurting, <coughs> we need to help people, right? But they're like, I want to say property. Uh, again, and bridge our economics. We're not. We're not. We not. We should be smart about things. We're not. So have a good, have a good one, right? Thank you very much. Do we have any other speaker cards? Thank you. Item D, no business. E1. Thank you. Good evening. The applicant is requesting the city council to consider a proposal to pre-zone 2.17 acre parcel as a prerequisite for future annexation of the site to the city in the R1 LPZ low density residential performance overlay zoning district. The pre-zone also includes the public right of ways adjacent to the site. The project is for pre-zoning and annexation only. No development is proposed at this time. The property is located east of Samio Street, west of Sienega Road, and southwest of the Eastview Drive and Sienega Road intersection. On August 28, 2014, the Planning Commission approved the attached resolution, number 2014-26, recommending to the City Council the approval of the pre-zone application. The City of Hollister City Council authorized the initiation of the pre-zone application at its regular City Council meeting on March 17, 2014. Pending pre-zone approval, the City Council will be asked to approve a resolution requesting the Local Agency Formation Commission, LAFCO, to initiate proceedings for annexation of the property. So with this, staff recommends that the City Council hold a public hearing, read by title only, waive full reading, and introduce ordinance number 1105, an ordinance of the City of Hollister to amend title 1724-250 of the Zoning Code of the Hollister Municipal Code to pre-zone property for annexation, and schedule a second reading and adoption of the ordinance for the October 20th, 2014 City Council meeting. Are there any questions from you? Any questions from Council? This time we'll open it up for public hearing. Dennis Lawler. I'm sorry. <laughs> Next one. Next sorry. one. No other speakers? No. At this time we will close public hearing. Okay. I'll make a motion that we introduce ordinance number 1105. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. 5-0 vote. Move forward with item F1. Good evening, council members. This uh, resolution 2014-192 would amend a low agreement for the Rustic Garden Apartment Project that was initiated in 1991. The initial loan agreement was for $400,000. This would add an additional $117,000 to assist with rehabilitation and repair of the apartments. Uh, the amendment would also defer and extend the term of the loan for another 30 years. As a part of this extension, the affordability restrictions would also be extended for a, an equivalent period of time. The uh, preservation, the, if there wasn't the extension the, and amendment to the loan agreement, the loan would be due in 2016 and the affordability restrictions would expire. The uh, loan agreement would help preserve the integrity of the apartment building and also the uh, would conserve the affordability, which is consistent with housing development policy 4.2. Uh, we're recommending that you adopt the resolution, which also includes a supplemental appropriation for use of housing reserve funds. The, uh, Dennis Lawler is here from South County Housing and also uh, affiliates with South County Housing uh, to answer any other questions you may have. Uh, uh, do you have any questions? Council, have any questions? Council Member Friend? What's the occupancy rate down there in Rustic Gardens? Is it 
pretty well. I, I think they, they would be able to, and I think it's, any other questions? Probably yeah, always questions. full, right, Dennis? It's always full. 100%. Any other questions from council? And just one le last thing I'd like to add, that the, the funds would be coming from our housing fund that is an asset from our former redevelopment agency. None of it would be general fund money. Okay, any other questions? Is there a motion? Wait, Mr. Mayor. Speaker I cards. Sorry. sorry. Now it's Dennis Lawler's turn. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Mayor, members of council, good evening. Dennis Lawler, uh, South County Housing. I just want to uh, uh, take this chance to come up before you because um, one, to, to support the uh, staff recommendation. Two, I'm not gonna get too many more chances as, as many of you know, the, uh, South County is in the process of, of merging with Eden Housing, a very uh, an incredible partner that we've found. You know, the, we've made this decision in order to be able to provide the absolute best service to Hollister and the, city, the, and the residents, our, to the city and our residents, and also in reflection of the, of the, of the um, political and economic realities that face, face nonprofits these days. We're very happy to have the partner that we have with Eden, Forty, uh, a nonprofit with 40 years of successful history, and I have the uh, chief operating officer Jan Peters and uh, project manager Kevin Leichner in the audience. Um, anyway, um, th this is an opportunity to, uh, as Mary said, extend the the life of the affordability restrictions, and so it will remain affordable. This and this additional funding will make sure that the physical appearance of this remains as a as an asset and a source of pride for the city and for the residents that live there. And um, we uh, respectfully ask for approval. And I can answer any questions about it. No questions for Councilor Friend. Is a question about the uh, occupancy? The occupancy <coughs> for all of the Hollister portfolio is about one, uh, the vacancy rate, I should say, is about 1%. We are full all the time. And we're very proud of the fact and, and happy that we have um, a, a significant number of what, what we would call extremely low income residents, so they're 30% of uh, median, which is, that's a tough target to hit, um, but we're, that's what, what we wanna do, and I know, I'm, I'm sure that the, the city feels the same, is it's, those are, it's a hard population to serve, and anytime we can do that, we want to. So by extending this narrative, that means if we let the gardens for 30 more years, it'll be, locked into the affordable housing group. Yes, and, and that's what I think we, we all wanted, you know, from day one. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there a motion? So moved. Make the motion. To approve. Oh, I'm sorry, who made the motion? Pauline. Pauline, the motion is second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, 5-0 vote. Move forward to F2. That'd be you. <laughs> Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, I come before you today to ask that you support the resolution um, number 2014-193, um, which is a scholarship program for the youth in our community, youth sports, um, we've created some guidelines um, there's that they need that every household would need to follow and on behalf of the Recreation Division we just ask that you support this. Okay, are there questions from Council? Council Member Friend. Wouldn't it seem appropriate to take that $10,000 and improve the whole program rather than just for a few kids? I mean, I, I understand what you're looking for be able to allow scholarships to be <coughs> presented to people that can't afford it. But if we would put that money into the whole program, then all of the kids would benefit from it, not just a selected few that, that could receive these scholarships. I mean, it just seems like we're, we're gonna spend $10,000 on a few kids. I'm not sure how many that means, but a small portion of the people that take advantage of these programs when we could put that money into better ring the programs for everybody, I think. 
If I may, um, so this is kind of a, an overall strategy we're trying to do here um, to put together a, a really comprehensive program and integrate PAL into it. So this first year, as sort of a, I guess, a Band-Aid, we wanted to offer the program to as many kids as possible without the barrier of them having to pay for that to <clears throat> entice those kids that, that maybe need intervention into the program. And this is one of those things that might help us do that. Um, the plan is, is once we get a full PAL program, po program going, that in the next five years, that most of, if not all of the program will be free. So this is sort of a, the first couple of toes in the water, if you will, to, to change that into a real intervention program. And we've, we've, we've written a grant and, or actually a grant and now a second grant to support that program with hopes that uh, we can um, have a program that we can sustain for many years from now and you know, 10 to 15 years from now have a, have a real strong program that will hopefully lower the crime rate because of just simple intervention techniques. So and, this. And I fully support what you're saying. I, I understand what you're trying to do. Yeah. I'm just saying it just seems like that would lock out some people that are just marginally can't, according to the criteria, could afford it. Yeah. And, and I'm afraid we're going to capture or we'd lose some kids that would just be on that bottom if, edge there. Right? Yeah, if you look at it from the standpoint of where we're at in this fiscal year, okay, and then look at it from, from, from next year when we start talking about this again. The hope is that we would have actual uh, funds from grants to help us with this. You know, we're trying to make a, a, a really a comprehensive program here that, that marries what we're already doing in recreation um, with um, a PAL program and all of the things that are real positive for our community's kids with that. And kind of what we're looking for is some assistance to get us through this next couple of seasons. And that should probably cover it about, right? Yeah. And, and if I can also say this, <clears throat> it, <clears throat> it seems a little bit strange that we're asking for, say, a supplemental appropriation from the general fund to basically pay for the general fund. I think for our perspective, it's this, is that you know, all, of our general, all of our revenue from recreation goes into the general fund. And we've sort of asked for this $10,000. So there's really no changing of hands, so to speak. But what it is, it's an opportunity for us, as David said, to take and sort of track and monitor how much we are actually using <coughs> um, through finance and through recreation so that when we go through these grants for CalGRIP or a number of these other things that we can, as a CBO, we can show that this is the type of money that we would normally use or have could use in the future to keep that program alive. Understand. I mean, if you were asking for seed money to get the PAL program started, we did that. I would be 100% <laughs> behind that. What I'm saying is the way this is written, it is only available mm -hmm. to certain people, and that does not that does not include all the people that want to participate in the PAL program. And that's that's my concern. <coughs> if there's people that are just barely above those qualifications that probably can't afford it any better than the person mm -hmm. that's below it. But, and I'd hate to see us, us losing those kids because they don't meet the criteria. Well, I, mean, I really feel, uh, uh, excuse me, sir. I really feel <coughs> the majority of the people will meet the criteria because it's a based on a percentage. If you meet this criteria, then you'll pay a certain percentage. So everyone will be able to participate and apply for the scholarship, and there is a criteria that they do need to follow. And if you're above that or below, then there's, you know, you either get a full scholarship or you're paying a certain percentage back. And I feel that our programs are very affordable and um, sustainable, and we, um, our recreation staff does a great job with each of our sports programs um, to where the improvements would be in equipment, but we've, we've council has approved to, for us to purchase equipment. Um, any other improvements um, I think we're we're doing a good job where we're at, but if this scholarship will give majority of our people the opportunity, whether it's um, a full scholarship or a certain percentage that that they pay back to us. Councilmember Stevenson, 
Um, now, you had this program in 2006, correct? And how many uh, participants did you have? I couldn't give you a number, but I can give you an amount that, that we <coughs> spent. Um, it was close to $7,000 seven that we spent in scholarships annually. And um, just with the increase in equipment and everything, we asked for the, the 10000 But I can go back and, and provide actual numbers. Yeah, I, I would like to know how okay. many. Um, the other question I have uh, is, um, now it, you mentioned you're going to be tapping into other grants, because I know there are other grants that support for youth activity. And uh, even on the county side, have you explored that opportunity? So we're pretty much the only entity that writes these kinds of grants. And really the, the, the idea now is in the last two years is with most of the justice grants, they require a, a program piece to it of up to 30 to 60 percent. Um, and it kind of fits within our philosophy of prevention and intervention that we've been kind of working towards for a number of years now. Um, the idea is that when I write a grant, these actually these federal grants and even some of the state grants, um, that since they already require 30 percent, maybe even 60 percent, that we have this program in place that we can truly show data that we're intervening and preventing um, future gang crimes or, or what have you and providing them um, better choices than there are now because, you know, let's be honest, there's not a, a lot of opportunities for um, kids and if we can provide them more opportunities and more choices, then um, hopefully we can prevent future generations of, of these problems from occurring. Um, and I, I, again, it, it kind of fits within our same philosophy with all these grants that we're getting now. So I just completed a grant just the other day. I'm writing one um, in the next two weeks. We'll also include the same philosophy as well. So we kind of need that. What, what City Manager Rivera was saying is absolutely correct in that we, we need hard data to show that we have a historical um, ability to provide these services so we can now then use um, grant funds to then enhance those services and then and then of course sustain them right sustainability okay. is important yeah. council member gomez uh, thank you <coughs> i lost my page i was going through some of the other stuff but i think a couple of things that need to be highlighted and as well that haven't been discussed um, are the not just qualifications to the applicants but also the scholarship requirements because that's also very important that they need to be engaged, they need to participate in community service. Uh, the parents, guardians need to, are expected to participate in some kind of volunteer activity. Um, the individuals are required to attend a minimum of 80% uh, of the scheduled practices. And all, I mean, all of that is, is great. That's very important. Um, and a lot of folks in general just can't afford it. I grew up in a family of 11, my parents and nine brothers and sisters, and my parents made $15,000 a year. And um, I had a neighbor, um, it wasn't Robbie, he wasn't that generous, but I had a neighbor that, that sponsored me. And he, he sponsored me to play Little League and then Pop Warner football. And if it wasn't for him and those opportunities, um, I grew up in, in VH, you know, it was all Northerners, you know, I mean, that was the environment that we grew up around. So it's opportunities like this that really create um, other avenues for, for kids to, that could potentially, you know, fall into, you know, fall between the cracks, uh, prevent that from, from happening. So I, I fully support this. Um, I think it's a, a great idea. I hope it's very successful for you. Um, and um, like I said, I mean, just making sure that we all understand the scholarship requirements the application process and who qualifies is, is great because it's not like we're just handing, I would not be able to support this if we were just giving free rides to people no matter what. Uh, this is absolutely not the case. Um, and as long as we maintain this criteria and we go through the application process, um, I'm excited that, that you folks are collaboratively uh, working together um, for the improvement of the, of the city in general. So thank you. Thank you. Council Member of Valdivia. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, you know, support this. I'll let go, uh, Councilman Gomez's statements. Um, 
And I just wanted to say that, you know, uh, living in the same building, <laughs> we get to see a lot of the activity that goes on with the, with the families and the kids and the community as a whole to utilize the facilities or whatever services. And I think that if we had more, you probably would get more people. And I understand hardly in terms when you have families that are even with four or five kids, I mean, you don't have the resources to, uh, you know, send everybody in and like me, but like my kids never qualified for anything at the time, but we used to push, I only had three kids, you know. We used to push them a lot to get, uh, participate, especially in school activities and that, and it really helped. And it does make a difference in a family when your children are involved in something, whether it's recreation, music, or whatever, because it also uh, helps them with their uh, activities in school, the learning process. I whole, wholeheartedly believe in that, and it gives them an in incentive. You know, they get excited about it, and I think that's really important. And it also, uh, what Chico said, it also, uh, you know, hopefully helps down with the crime wave, and, and, and also in terms of where a lot of the children are gonna go. Uh, and um, I know that uh, before uh, we would get, or the recreation would get, um, a lot of the clubs to participate, but that's probably dwindled down. Yeah. A lot of clubs don't exist anymore, so it's not there. I know that that activity was, you know, maybe later it can increase, and hopefully you can get some grants to keep it going. And I wholly support it, because I think it's so important. Because um, as a parent raising children, and if I had, uh, I remember my son, he had five, and he only had money for one, but he wouldn't, he wouldn't they wouldn't participate you know, unless we help them, and we help them a couple of times, but sometimes you can't do that all the time. But uh, that's the way it happens with the families, and it's, it's really the product that, you know, comes out of all these activities that kids are uh, involved in, it, it's for the best. It's, I think it's very positive, and I still want to tell you that. And, you know, when when uh, you see, like, when they have the recreation as the aquatics, aquatics, oh, a lot of people participate, and I think they make an effort to make sure a lot of people that can't afford to participate in, the sh in all the lessons or whatever, but they do have a piece in there, and I think that's really important, and I, I just wanted to say that. Thank you. I just want to say I, I love this idea. I think it's great. It's what we should be doing as a city. I would just like to see uh, more hours doing community service, okay. and I really don't care about their income level because I'm sure there's families that can afford it that don't want to pay for their kids to go do an activity because they'd rather use it for themselves. So if there's a kid out there that doesn't have the funding, the family can afford it, give them more community hours. I think this is, okay. this is what we're looking for, to get the kids active, learn how to work also at the same time, to give back, is what I should say, to the community. And I think if we build a program like that, I'd be happy to come back and put another 10,000 into it next year. Okay. This is the direction we should be going, so thank you for bringing it forward. Thank you, Chief working so hard on it. <coughs> Do we have any speaker cards? Motion to approve resolution 2014-193. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Thank you very much. I just want to say on, on behalf of the recreation staff and myself, um, this has been a goal of mine for a very long time and um, I worked on the criteria and brought it to our city manager uh, Vera's attention and he worked with um, us along with Trisha Lee and I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you and I'm very proud right now and I, it's a good feeling that I have. I'm serious. <laughs> I'm sorry. You realize they approved it, right? I, I did, <laughs> but it feels good to me and it's <laughs> finally, like we, we finally did this. We have been like, um, how do I say it? Here we are, recreation, we are providing great services, and now we're really going to be able to get the word out that there's an intervention prevention um, part of recreation to this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Let's move, her, uh, move forward to item G1, reports from City Council. Uh, Councilmember Gomez. <coughs> yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I um, I don't I don't know if um, I reported out last time on COG, but um, so we did. We we are taking some steps in or organizing a um, a committee for Highway 25, and that's going to be a stakeholders community to look into. Um, additional ways of um, 
funding um, Highway 25, um, the uh, expansion, or excuse me, the widening of Highway 25 and the possible um, realignment um, of it. Um, I think, unfortunately, um, we, we had the desire to, to pass a resolution a couple months back when Councilmember Valdivia was there, uh, when um, Councilmember Scatini uh, stepped down. Um, she also mentioned uh, that COG should consider passing a resolution um, detailing what the next step should be and what needs to be done for the widening of Highway 25. Both the city and the county passed a resolution saying that yes, it's the most important t thing to them and that uh, they should uh, fast track it and do everything they could to get Highway 25 widened. All of a sudden we get the COG and the only two people supporting um, any steps forward are the two representatives of the city of Hollister. So uh, even though the county passed a resolution, the representatives, the same ones that passed a resolution in the county are uh, opposing it at the COG level. So um, I don't, <laughs> I'm just kind of frustrated, but at the same time, um, I do believe that the next step needs to be a, a resolution approved by COG um, to take the necessary steps to uh, move Highway 25 to the list of constrained projects and, um, um, and take the necessary steps to get it back um, on the regional transportation plan. But that's kind of where we are. We're kind of in limbo and um, I have a feeling that things will, I have a feeling that more things will get done after November 4th. <laughs> so, thank you. <laughs> Council Member of Valdivia. I'll pass. Council Member Goldman said everything. <laughs> Council, Council Member Friend. Yeah, I do have a couple of reports this time. I, I uh, went to the fire committee report, the joint fire committee report, and the chief had a very good meeting, had a very good report about the status of the third fire station on the north side of the county. Um, seems like progress is being made. We have the building. We're having the, the, the garage built. And uh, so things are moving in probably by the first of the year we might even actually see working crews out there. Um, then the second meeting I had was the Intergovernmental Committee with the, with the mayor, and that was, uh, I guess now I know why you don't miss a meeting, because when they, when you miss a meeting, you get elected vice chair, and if the <laughs> chair doesn't show up, you show up for your first meeting and you get to lead the meeting, so it was, it was a lot of fun. Great meeting, plus we had another fire update by the chief. We had some people from San Juan um, Canyon. <clears throat> they created their own committee and got together and got some money to have San Juan Canyon Road widened and have the fire protection enhanced down there because they, uh, as the chief pointed out to them, they're, they're out there by themselves and if there's a major disaster, you know, they don't have the numbers that we have here in the town so the priority list is probably going to put them way down on the priority list so they realize that they have to take care of themselves and from what I understood from the meeting, they're doing a heck of a job of creating their own fire zones and creating their own safety zones for their houses and stuff. So it was really interesting. Uh, and then we discussed adding more people to the committee, um, more reports from the uh, school boards so that everybody knows, you know, that <coughs> the governments aren't doing one thing and the school boards are doing another thing. and. All of a sudden, we get to the, the gate, and there's five people standing there. Oh, well, why did we all show up here? So it seems like all, all the different groups are headed in the right direction, but nobody knows what's going on between the groups. So we want to get those people involved so we know what's going on with the school districts also. And that's about it. Perfect. Council Member Stevenson? Nothing to report. And I just kind of will report the same thing as Councilmember Friend, he covered it very well with the intergovernmental. The county and city are, st are still working hard to partner on different projects. Um, right now we're looking at how we can work on the roads together and keep focus on Highway 25. And Councilmember Friend covered the other parts of our meeting. So thank you very much. Let's move forward to item G2, informational reports from City Council. Councilmember Gomez. I just uh, just want to quickly thank um, 
staff that was um, out there, the police department, and I know Mike Chambliss and and others were out there volunteering at the um, county fair. So I just wanted to uh, thank them for their for their time. I saw everybody out there. Saw the saw the mayor out there. Saw obviously Sherry. We were right across the, the aisle from one another, and uh, and Ray as well. And um, anyway, just want to thank everybody for um, uh, for being out there and um, having the city of Hollister uh, represented. And I, I even saw I even saw Billy's uh, selfie on uh, Facebook. So thank you, Councilmember Valdivia. Yes. Councilmember Friend. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to also thank Mike for setting up the booth for the air show, and uh, I, I got to spend five hours in that little sweat box. Um, <laughs> But it was a, it, again, it was a great county fair. I, I wish more people would, would, you know, I come from a small town in Central California and we had the same kind of small little fair, you know, with goats and pigs running around and it was kind of cool. So this is a, it's still a small town fair and it's really an enjoyment to go see. Um, you know, several attractions, several very good bands on the bandstand. I was really impressed with some of those people. So. Hats off to the fair committee too. <coughs> job, so. That's it. Councilmember Stevenson. Nothing to report. I'd like to report. I had the honor of watching our chief, uh, Chief Westrick, uh, organize a neighborhood watch in my neighborhood. <laughs> Got to sit in the back and be <coughs> quiet and watch him do his magic and explain to the public what's really going on in the city. So it was good to. Uh, to see that happening, it was good to see the neighborhood come together that way and understand the importance of working together so that we can bring down the crime rate or we can work together in case of emergencies. So I want to thank the chief for coming out. Also want to report on a, uh, we did a census or interviews with the homeless a few weeks back, uh, try to get a count of what's, how many chronic homeless we have and I want to thank the county and the Health and Human Services for all the work they did to organize it. They did a great job. And I want to thank Supervisor Barrios for uh, walking with me to some of the camps out there along the river to go uh, bring some of the people in so we can sit down and talk to them and, and plan for the future. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I too want to thank Mike Chambliss and, and his airport staff for setting up the booth. Um, it does make it a little bit more pleasurable to be at the fair um, with the air show kind of as the focus and not just the city of Hollister because uh, you don't get yelled at constantly for two or three hours. As we you're don't get yelled shift. at anymore. No. Well, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> take the airplane away. You'll see what happens. <laughs> um, the other thing is that I, I, uh, I hope uh, I see at least a few of you out there at the Red Ribbon Run um, on Saturday as I will be participating even though um, I wish I had another month to train. And even though I'm wearing blue, I cannot stand the Dodgers. It's one to one. Um, I do hope they win so that we can have a Giants Dodgers uh, uh, series again. And that's it. <laughs> Thank you very much. No city comment. Attorney. No comments. Good evening, Mayor and City Council. <laughs> Nothing to report at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Chief? I too will be out at the Red Ribbon Run on Saturday. It'll be great for our whole community. Um, we have a absolutely a ton of entries um, in this event. People are really excited about it, and I'm excited about other events that we can do in the future. So this is uh, kind of the first foray in something like this. So pretty, pretty exciting stuff, 8 a.m. in the morning, Saturday morning. I'll see you there, Bill. Was it, <laughs> wasn't it somebody's uh, birthday when do you recently? When be finished? Wasn't it somebody's birthday recently? I thought somebody had a birthday yeah. recently. Well, West, yeah, yeah Westrick's West birthday was yesterday. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Chief, when do you expect the race the to be done? Uh, we expect it to only be about an hour and a half total out there. There'll be some registration and some uh, events up till about noon. Well, I would run it, but I can't run that far. So I can do maybe 100 yards, and that would be it for me. Unfortunately, it's well, my I knees is what the issue. <laughs> City Clerk. Um, thank you. I just wanted to remind everyone that the second annual Olive Festival will be on Saturday, October 11th. It will be held at Volado Park from 11 to 5. 
There's a lot more activities going on and it should be a great, great event. And um, to remind the council members, I have applications for the Veterans Day Parade, so I'll sign anybody up that wants to be in the parade. It's, it's a, a fun, fun day and it keeps growing every year and Frankie's here for that. And Christine's got some election information for everyone. Um, we just wanted to let everyone know that um, state and local pamphlets are in the mail. Um, vote by mail were dropped at the San Jose Post Office on October 6th, so delivery should be later in the week. Alternate poll workers are needed for November. Letters went to voters who had changes to their voting location or non-voting locations. Voters should review the back of their sample ballot for changed locations or voting methods. And to visit the county website to check your polling location and sample ballots. Perfect. One other thing, October 20th is the last day to register to vote. So if anyone needs to register or re-register if they've moved, they need to do it by October 20th. <coughs> and request an absentee ballot by? October 28th. That. October 6th, start today, as of today, you could start your vote by mail requests, and that ends on October 28th. I have a question. Sure. Don't we also have some candidates' forums coming up? Mm. Yes, thank you for asking. It's tomorrow night. And the next night, Tuesday and Wednesday, here in the council chambers, um, sponsored by the Farm Bureau, and it starts at 6 o'clock. Both nights. The city's two measures will be... Tuesday night. Tuesday night, yes, thank you. And then all the candidates are on Wednesday. Okay, thank you very much. Let's move forward with item G3, Measure E Committee. Council, I'd like to introduce uh, John Everson of the Measure E Committee to give their report. <coughs> Thank you, Brett. Um, once again, I'm pinch hitting for our board chair, Larry Barr, who could not be here tonight. I uh, understand he's up in San Jose. A um, couple of disclaimers before we go through this. Uh, we were a little concerned in that uh, we have had problems getting a quorum with our eight members, and we put this report together kind of through email, and there were two members of the committee who had not responded back. So we have six who said they were fine with it. I see Frankie's here tonight. I hope she's okay with it. Okay, so we're down to one. Um, I'd like to introduce the two members of the committee that are here. Uh, Frankie Gallagher uh, represents the Hollister De Chamber of Commerce, and then uh, Carol Len Lenore, who was uh, appointed by Council Member Friend, I believe. Um, we put this report together, and then over the weekend, I was going to do some, a PowerPoint and realized it's been a few years since I did any of this stuff, and I couldn't remember how to do PowerPoint. Uh, so anyway, I, I have the report up here. Uh, we're going to concentrate on some of the charts that are on there. Um, if you just scroll down some, <coughs> it lists uh, the eight committee members, uh, five of them appointed by council members, and then there's uh, Hollister Downtown Association Chamber of Commerce and the um, uh, um, San Benito, Benito Business Council. So we'll scroll down to the first. Um, uh, the first thing we did, and maybe a little bit further so it gets the chart, was to look at the history of Measure T and Measure E revenue. So we went back five years, and you can kind of see this graph and the numbers that are up there. Uh, for the last uh, fiscal year, uh, Measure E generated $4.2 million. Uh, that number, I, I should make also a disclaimer that anything in here from 2013-2014 uh, is not audited. Uh, I sh also should state that all of the information in here was obtained from reports or information from the Finance Department. Uh, some of it is putting different reports together and coming up with some conclusions, but it all did come from the finance department. So, I mean, just brief look at looking at the chart, I put a trend line in there. Um, measure T, Measure E has been uh, 
uh, increasing over the past five years. There are a couple years of, of dips in there, but in general, uh, it's been going up about two hundred dollars or two hundred thousand a year. Go down the next chart. Um, uh, when we first convened, um, we I don't know if the word was difficulty, but getting a picture of what how the city uses Measure T. Uh, to clarify for the public, and this really is supposed to be a public a report to the public, uh, when the city collects Measure E, they do not put it in a separate Measure E fund and pay services out of there. Measure E is a general sales tax, which means it can be used for any purpose in the city. It was marketed to preserve the current services that were there. So what the city does, and it makes sense, is all of that Measure T or E money gets transferred into the general fund. And the marketing of Measure E was that the city was not going to reduce services. You may remember there was an austerity plan at the time, and the purpose of Measure E uh, at that time was to preserve and not have to implement that, um, that austerity plan. So I kind of made a chart here uh, of the general fund. The blue on the bottom is your, is your regular general fund revenue. And then the yellow up on top is what you are receiving from in this case, Measure E. So if we go back to the last fiscal year, uh, there was $18 million in revenue, 18.1 million. Big difference over you go back five years. 4.2 million of that is coming from Measure E. So um, people talk about what would you do if Measure E isn't there? Well, your revenue you would see would be a little bit under $14 million. Um, okay, go to the next chart. Okay, there's, um, in, in, your, in the city's revenue, there are a couple of things that have happened over the past five years. Uh, uh, one of the things that has happened is you've had some revenue from land sales. That's not normal revenue that goes on. I, I forget which year it was. I think it was 10, 11. I'm not sure. But there was a sale of the courthouse and a portion of that was transferred into the city's general fund. And it was based on the legal analysis of the sales tax that would be lost because that had been zoned commercial. So there's been, and then the year where the, um, there was a sale of, of the Walgreens property out there. So I looked at those. Those are kind of one-term things. And then also in 13, 14, there was a new revenue that came from the fire contract. That was about $1.2 million. So what I tried to do here was um, take, out, take out the revenue from the fire contract, take out the revenue from the land sales to make a comparison apples to apples over uh, the past five years. And again, you can see there was kind of 11, 12. There was a dip in revenue. But in general, that revenue has been increasing over the five years. Next slide. Okay, so that's the revenue side. Next, we look at the expense side. And uh, these are the total general fund expenses over the past five years. And again, a trend line that's been going up. Now, when I first did this chart, and probably it's something you're seeing, from 12, 13 to 13, 14, there was a huge increase in expense. Now, there are some reasons for that. One is you had the fire contract come in. You got revenue of $1.2 million but you got an expense associated with that. So a lot of that expense, or not a lot, maybe 1.2 million in 13, 14 is due to that fire contract. Also in 13, 14 was the first year that the uh, city council, um, uh, I would just say the city faces some problems with retirement in future years and retirement costs. The city council made a decision to transfer some of that um, uh, or excuse me, they, they, they did an expense of $875,000 to put in a separate CalPERS fund. So you see that as an expense in 13, 14. So of that big change, a couple million dollars is just due to those two factors. <coughs> okay, then what I tried to do was take those factors out. 
So you compare apples to apples again. So this would be um, expense, taking out the fire contract, expense. All right, sp what I did was I took the $1.2 million that you got from revenue, subtracted it from the expense last year, thinking those were a wash. And then I took out the CalPERS uh, side fund transfer because that's really not an expense. We still have it. So then you can see a trend line where expenses are somewhat increasing uh, over the past five years. The 1011 expense, um, and, and if we went back in history, that 910 expense would be pretty constant going back three years. There was a big drop in 1011, and that came about as uh, some of you are on the console uh, when you did the 12, 12.5% reduction. Uh, there were a number of positions eliminated, uh, and I think it was, if I remember, each department came up somehow with that, and that's the reason for that big drop there. <coughs> um, people talk about general fund reserve. Uh, the city really doesn't have a reserve account. They don't take money and put it into reserve. But what the city does uh, to look at that, it's called the fund ending balance. So every June 30th, um, the city looks at the ending balance, and that's normally what's called the reserve. At the end of that fiscal year, that's what's left over there for the following fiscal year. That ending balance can vary during the year, you know, because you may have some big revenue all of a sudden come in or some big expense. But if you compare June 30th to June 30th, that's when the books are closed. A and here's the trend line for that uh, ending balance. And this is, um, Brett made me put in the word available up there. <laughs> because uh, the council made a decision in 1314 to take, I forget, it was like 890,000. $865,000, it's in the general fund, but you classified it as restricted for economic development. So um, that's why you see that ending balance go down in 1314. You know, there's still another in the general fund, $865,000 or something like that, but you place that in a restricted account or whatever you call it, so it can't be spent. But it's still available. Oh, yes, it's available. It's <laughs> With council approval, I would assume. I probably can't read all these numbers. This is, uh, we did this chart on, on the first uh, go around, the first report. Um, when we started talking about this, um, uh, trying to figure out where these monies went and how they got spent, the city has a number of what's called cost, cost centers. You can think of them as departments. Fire department is a cost center. Police department is a cost center. Finance is a cost center. Human resource. City council is a cost center. Um, so I, all I did here was take the chart from our first report and expand that out um, for another, another fiscal year. A and like we can't see the numbers up here. I think you can read them in your report. And then there's a percent column there and it tells that particular cost center what percent of the budget and so the budget, does that cost center receive for the current budget or any year? Okay, if you go down to the chart, uh, it's a little easier to see. So I took out, I don't know, there's 20 cost centers, and I just took those percent of the budget, do a pie chart so you can see, uh, for example, police department received 33% received of your budget uh, for 13, 14. Fire department received 30% and so on. Non-department is kind of strange, but that's um, expense that really can't be attributed to any particular department. Uh, when you do, when they, when the city does a land sale, that's listed, or not a land sale, I'm sorry. When you did your CalPERS transfer, that was listed as an expense, and it comes in non-department. Um, there are a couple of big items in there that I can't remember now, but, but it's things you can't contribute to one department. Um, and you can see police and fire making up 63% of the budget. You know, and then I went around anything in that other department, each department is less than 2%. So you can pretty much see that uh, if you're going to make cuts, 
and when I was on the council and you guys have struggled with this, you know, these other departments, there's, there's not much there in, in terms of dollar amounts. Um, next largest department is engineering, parks, planning, uh, with 4%. And I, I forget, there, there's, I still think that their budgets are under a million dollars. Yeah, so. Okay, this was 2013. I made a comparable chart if you go down 2011-12. I went back two years. Um, if you remember, police department, their budget went up. Well, yeah, you had the fire contract. It looks like police department's budget went down because it was 30% last year and it was 33%. But those are percentages of the total budget. Actually, your budget for police, your dollar amount, has gone up each year. It's not like there have been cuts to the police department. There were some other um, big changes in the last two years. If you look here, uh, engineering 3%, and uh, where's planning? 1%. That's only 4% of the budget two years ago. And if you go one chart back up, it's now 8%. And it might be thought, why are we spending all that money there? Well, the answer is in 13, 14, and a lesser degree, 12, 13, cities had building permits. So you've got revenue coming in from building permits, but in turn also planning and engineering have to go through all those, reading those permits and approving those permits. So actually, it's true. Their expense went up, but it would be offset by some revenue coming in here from the uh, building permits. Um, okay, next slide. Um, we, we put this in there uh, as we had discussion about personnel costs. And, and of course, the big one everybody talks about is retirement. Um, so, and this is actually something I've compiled <laughs> over the last 10 years from getting the reports from, uh, from Brett. Uh, down the left side is the categories that are, you can call them line items for personnel cost. Um, so of course salaries, regular salaries is the biggest amount, 5.2 million. And then not surprisingly, uh, retirement costs $2 million. I can kind of track, going back five years, retirement costs were 2.2 million. They went down a couple years, or three years, and then back up. And I don't have a reason for that. Um, other than salaries went up too, and if salaries go up, retirement costs uh, went up. Um, I think I put in the notes here someplace. Uh, I think you talked about it tonight uh, in terms of retirement costs. Uh, that sunset in the uh, firefighters contract, uh, that's 9% of salaries you know, that are going to kick in, that uh, it's going to be an re uh, additional retirement cost. Group health insurance. Um, that has pretty much increased the last, uh, especially the last couple of years. And probably people are familiar with that. Medical costs have gone up, medical insurance costs have gone up, dental insurance costs have gone up. A and so on down, the next one is um, overtime. I guess medical services was actually third. Uh, overtime, or was fourth. Uh, overtime, uh, 13, 14 was a million dollars. And if you look back at the history there, it was 829, then 608, then 568, and then started uh, back up again. And I know that um, um, in the Consul's 1415 budget, he, he seemed to have really addressed the issue of overt overtime. Uh, I've looked at the data from September 30th to see the budget numbers are very much reduced. I did see that. Uh, police and fire were a little bit over in their overtime, but nothing compared to what it was uh, last year. Someone called my attention to the fact that if you add up those numbers in the column, they don't come equal to one, the total on the bottom. A and there's true, that's true, uh, like I said, this is the information I've collected over the years. And there are a couple of line items that I didn't put in there that I, is there a, uh, Police officers, retirement trust, or something. Yeah, it's not more than seven thousand dollars a year. And then there was a line item that I had some years ago. I don't know what it was, but it was it was a small amount. Uh, those are really insignificant. Okay, next slide. 
And then I just ta tried to take that data and put it into a pie chart. Uh, so you can see, of course, yeah, regular salaries, 43%, retirement, 18%, and so on uh, around the circle. This is from 1314. Uh, if you kind of remember, retirement, 18%, health insurance, 9%. We'll go down to the next slide. I went back two years in history. Retirement, 19%, health insurance, 8%. So a little bit of change there. Regular salaries were 49%. I can't remember what. It wasn't the regular salaries went down. It was something else that went up in there. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to go through all this. Um, there was concern uh, among committee members about positions that were added and were positions added because the marketing of Measure E was to retain services. So I, I'm not going to read all those, but what we could gather from the documents we got from the finance department, those are the position changes that occurred from 12-13 to 13-14. Um, kind of summaries and conclusions. Um, and this is my personal feeling that I believe uh, the mission of the Measure E Committee is just to report to the public on the expenditures of Measure E. And, and I can just say we didn't find anything in any of these reports that has any abuse or anything out of the ordinary. You know, there are some things that I think the Council needs to keep in mind a as you go forward, but we found everything was uh, appropriate. Um, and I, we, we do think that now, very soon, the Council needs to adopt some type of plan, a strategic plan, because 2015 is around the corner. In three years, that sets. I remember when I was on the Council, we, 2009, we started talking about what are we going to do if it's not there? And whatever that is, if it's we're going to plan for not having Measure T or whatever it is, that's coming you know, in the not too distant future that they're going to have to deal with one way or the other. And uh, any additions from other council members? If there are any questions, um, we'll be glad to entertain those. Any questions Notice? from the council? No, thank you. Um, council Member Gomez? Yeah, no, the only thing I wanted to say, Doug, is, is, is thank you for, uh, for the work that, that you and the, and the committee and the rest of, um, of the folks have, have done. I thought this was a, a, a nice report, and um, that's what we wanted initially from this committee was just to be able to have an extra s set of eyeballs that was not politically motivated to actually look at this and give us the public's point of view on on how you see uh, how you see, how you see these things uh, uh, being used and and obviously the the consistency and the projections that, that you guys have in here are are wonderful just so just thank you thank you thank you I do um, I do have one other thing to say, and that is <coughs> back in 2009, 10, and I do remember these times, <laughs> things have changed a, a little bit, and obviously they're improving, so that's good, but in 2010 and 9, we were collecting just a little bit over $3 million um, in, uh, in sales tax revenue, and the additional, obviously, $3 million in um, roughly of, of Measure T funds. Um, and I know that when uh, Mayor Velasquez came in, you know, that's something that you pushed, that's something that we pushed on the council back then, and that is to eventually wean ourselves uh, from this as much as possible. So we have made some, you know, some, some pretty big expenses to trim down uh, future costs, and I think those were pretty uh, wise moves that, that you made and, and the rest of the council uh, took on. So. You know, as we see things getting getting better, I mean, I look at just our portion, not the additional portion of Measure E, but just our portion going from $3 million in 2009-10 to potentially roughly close to $5 million by the time, these are just my projections in my head, but um, close to roughly $5 million when Measure E is set to sunset. Um, and that's if we just maintain status quo. That's if we just maintain what we're doing now. So 
um, you know, having those two, having a, an additional $2 million um, is going to be very helpful when eventually um, this council uh, will have to make some tough decisions that they could have been rough, really, really tough if those decisions that this, uh, that we made weren't made. So um, anyway, I'm glad that we're heading in the, in the right direction. So. If I can just make a couple comments on what I'm, on your comments, uh, Councilmember Gomez and Frankie's comments. Um, yeah, yes, that's true. I, we really appreciate it. I think the whole community appreciates the grants. I, I think I put something in here, the caution, though, that grants expire. Then, then you know, you've got to fill that hole somehow if they keep that. And the other, um, in terms of the ending balance, you know, that may be five or six million in 2018, but that, you can't take an ending balance and replace measure E with that because that's one time. You know, you could do that for a year. That so I, just to clarify, I was meaning um, sales tax revenue, not the okay. ending balance. Yeah. Okay. yeah, the ending balance, I'm hoping that um, mm -hmm. we never have to dip, dip into that. That's but, right. Yeah. Yes. Anything else? Council Member Valdivia, you yeah. have a question? <coughs> uh, Doug, I just want to thank you and the committee for the work you've done. I think it's tremendous. <laughs> when I was going through all the charts, I could really read them and follow them. I had a couple of questions about uh, uh, properties and uh, the fire department, but you answered that in your presentation. Okay. And I just want to thank you for the hard work. And also, I agree with you that council needs to um, um, look ahead and, and come up, look and see where we're going to be at in the future. Unfortunately, I won't be here, but I'm pretty sure my colleagues will look at that wholeheartedly. Uh, and, and also, like I said, and uh, I think I mentioned, I talked a little bit about this in our retreat, that we need to look and, look and see if the community is willing to make uh, uh, a permanent, the, the, the tax sale is a permanent issue. A permanent, it's not an issue, but make it permanent because I think that the, the re report that you gave and all the work that's being done, and the community is seeing, looking at how everything is being spent and we're moving ahead in the right direction. So um, I just wanted to say the two of them, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Council Member Friend. Yeah, I like the previous two council members here. I think you guys have interpreted what we thought the committee should do. And I know you've struggled to, <laughs> to figure out what we needed and what we wanted. And I think you've hit the ball out of the ballpark because it's it's a much more comprehensive report than I expected, and I thank you for that. That really, and, Doug's work and, I, <laughs> and I'm sure Doug kept you guys to the grindstone. <laughs> but on the other, and I agree with Doug on the long term, and I mean, I don't think I've had a conversation with the mayor that lasted more than two minutes that he didn't talk to us about the, the gorilla in the room in 2016. We <coughs> constantly talk about it and moves like the pay down on the side funds, mm -hmm. uh, some of the moves that are currently going on, hopefully with the re early retirement and stuff. We're con we, uh, we understand that, you know, the, the sunset clause is 2016. It's around the corner. You know, I don't have to run in 2016, so it might, might not affect me, but yeah, we're, we're mm -hmm. taking strides every day, I think, to go that way. And I, and I think you can see the budget is going that way. And like we said in the last meeting, you know, a lot of this goes to the city staff holding the line that we've asked them to hold. I mean, it was amazing five years ago when we asked them for their 12% and they came up with it. And I know there was a lot of people that were unhappy with that when it happened, but we can see now that that really paid off really well. Hopefully we're not going to have to do an austerity plan in 2016. Sorry. But, uh, but thank you guys for all the work you've done. <laughs> thank you. I agree. And thank you, Brad. Thank also, you. working with the good folks. Just yeah. want to, to Doug, go ahead. The information. Just want to say, I, I know you guys did a lot of work there. <laughs> and it's a, it's good to see the work you did, and it helps us. 
it really does make sure we are on the path. Councilmember Friend talked about it, and Councilmember Gomez. We, we meet, that finance committee meets, meets every week, and mission number one is make sure we're balanced in the next couple of years, and we're gonna get there, and we're gonna do it in a smart way. We, as I said before, we can't afford to lay people off. We need our team members, and they've done a great job, and both Chief Westrick and Chief Connor have done an incredible job with what they've had or they have, and we're, we're excited about what it looks like a couple of years from now. So we're working hard, and we're not going to stop until we get there. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, I you have good. a speaker, Marty Richmond. <coughs> yes, you can, sir. Oh, I have to comment. Uh, it's a budget item. I'm, I'm, it's mandatory, right? That I it's comment absolutely on mandatory. Marty from Richmond from. <laughs> Uh, so let me thank the committee, uh, uh, especially uh, uh, Ms. Emerson, for uh, that, that very good report, and all the members of the committee, because that's a report that has some beat to it. And I've seen a lot of reports when we first started this that didn't. I'm not. I'm. I'm. I know. I'm. I'm considered a hypercritic, but you know, if you don't criticize anything, it never changes. So uh, uh, we're doing a lot better. That's a good report. I can tell people a lot put a lot of uh, work into it. Just to recap my history on this, I vehemently opposed Measure T. I hope you remember that. And I won't tell you why, and I made no bones about it. I had absolutely no confidence in our budget, our ability to budget. I couldn't understand our budget, even though I sat here through every meeting. I, I took those papers home, stacks of papers that I would, used to get. I think you all remember those stacks of papers and money would appear and disappear on those stacks somehow, and I would go, where did this come from and where did this go? And I, for whatever reason, I know it's water under the bridge and I'm not beating a dead horse, but I could never understand what the heck was going on. So I vehemently opposed Measure T. But it came aware to me after uh, the, the four or five years that we couldn't survive without that extra money. So I did support Measure E, and I thought, uh, could see we were on the path to correcting some of our budgetary problems and facing the music on some of the things we had done in the past that had put us into debt at huge interest rates, seven, seven and a half percent. Well, you know, I could walk down to a bank and get a three percent loan, and we were paying, you know, CalPERS wish rates. Um, and so uh, you did, I'm glad I supported it. I think it worked out well. And now, we're facing 2016 right around the block. And I gotta tell you, I think we gotta face the music. It's a lot harder to generate revenue uh, with economic development than anybody thought. We've got some things working against us. It's too much to go over now. But it's a lot harder. And the one thing about these, these kind of taxes are you get to keep it all, basically. Uh, you don't have to share it with the county. You don't have to share it with the state. I don't believe in fooling oneself uh, about a temporary problem that probably is permanent. I think you ought to seriously consider making it permanent. When I say permanent, it doesn't mean in perpetuity forever, but it means, look, five years is not going to do it. Another five years is not going to do it. I think the, the, the public is, is very attuned to what people say. And if you say it's a temporary, they expect it'll go away in five, and then you say it's temporary, it goes away in 10. And I don't think we're gonna be able to do it in another 10 years. If I did, I would say let's do temporary. I think we're gonna start looking as a permanent tax. Truth of the matter is, as I was discussing before with Carol, uh, it is a targeted tax in a way. Our gasoline taxes are huge. And the truth of the matter is our commuters make a better living than the people who work here in general. <laughs> I tell you, that's the way it is. And we don't charge it on the got to live stuff. So you don't pay it on your rent. You're not paying it on your utilities. You're not paying it on your food. You're not paying it on, on all that stuff that you have to have to live. And I'll wrap up by just saying this. So therefore, it is in many ways, except for the commuters, a tax that you can avoid if you want to, if you really have to. The commuters will have to pay it and basically they have the better jobs and, and they're gonna wind up paying more. So I hope you will consider making it permanent. 
uh, because I think it's a smart thing to do. It's already 25 percent of your budget. Thank you for allowing me the extra few seconds. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just real quick, I don't want anybody to start panicking. It's 20, March of 2018 that expires. Oh, 2016. <laughs> <laughs> but he told us. He told it's us so rare. <laughs> the mayor said we had to think about 2016. We couldn't look at uh, right, think about it in 60, 62 weeks. And just to point what you're, what you're saying is, the goal is to be done by 2016 so we could plan correctly to ask the public if we can continue. Because if we, don't not, if we do not go on with that sales tax, we can never do the infrastructure we need to do. And that's the truth. So what we want to do is prove to the public we can get our house in order first, use the money as we promised, and then if they allow us to continue, we can finally get to the infrastructure improvements that we need and some of the quality of life projects that we need. So we are going to keep our promise. We're going to get ourselves balanced by 2016, and then we're going to move forward as a community. So thank well, you. Right. So thank you again, everyone, for – oh, let me point out, Gilroy is going to be 9.25 here. Right. So there's no savings going over there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Items H, I, J, and K, no Motion business. For adjournment. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries, 5-0 vote. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.